Hi, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all the learners. So today, I will cover on the topic of the introduction to the safety. So the learning outcome on this topic is uh, the students will be able to uh, state the laboratory equipment and to understand the use of chemical film hoods to demonstrate the PPE equipment and also to explain the emergency control devices at the end of these uh, topics. Okay, so <clears throat> actually uh, in the 2008, the film hoods, what are they and why are they so important to lab safety? As uh, I mentioned to you just now, in December of 2008, a staff researcher named Sherry shang -Zi was working in the UCLA Chemistry Lab, University of California, Los Angeles Labs. Eh? And uh, there is a terrible accident occurred when, they, when she used this lab. Uh, the third lithium, uh, the syringe carrying a uh, chemical broke its part and releasing the flammable material onto her clothes and skin. And what happened is, as soon as the terributyl lithium came into contact with the surrounding oxygen, it emitted and the burning over 40% of Sanji's body. Less than three weeks uh, later, she scumbled to second and uh, third degree and died in the hospital. So, this number of tragic accidents have occurred all over the world, right, in the research lab across the world. And unfortunately, the death of the Sherry Sunday is only one of many cases that highlight the need for proper lab cleaning, uh, safety procedures, and also lab furniture. To stress the importance of worker safety, we're, well, we are starting with the basics. And if you see on my left uh, picture here, this is the Sanji's, uh, this is a Sherry Sanji's, yeah? okay? So the most important here, we need to understand what is a film hood and why is it the first line of defense in the lab, any laboratory. So the chemical film hood is a, is a critical piece of laboratory equipment that allow personnel to conduct potentially hazardous work in a partially enclosed space. So <clears throat> the chemical hood is actually, the function is to protect the laboratory personnel from the effects of toxic fumes by exhausting vapor away from the lab work bench or work area. By ensuring the proper ventilation of the entire laboratory area by circulating air, particularly drawing in and removing contaminated air. So the important also of the chemical hood is to shield the researcher. Means that uh, from the diverse Tating effects of chemical spills, fires, and also unintended reactions. So, why is it so important? All right, the film who is arguably uh, the, the single most important piece of the equipment in any laboratory equipment uh, in any laboratory environment. That is because it is the first line of defense against many of the top laboratory danger, which includes the inhalations of harmful vapors and then the fires of explosions, the chemical or thermal burns, and also the chemical absorptions. So the proper hood use, uh, well, uh, uh, always work under hood if you are using volatile or hazardous chemicals or biohazardous bio material. So when you working in the laboratory, okay, you you are working with a volatile of hazardous. You must work under the hood, and remember that the hood sash must be lowered to a provide maximum protection, and do always wear the required protective equipment when you working in hood. Alright, this is example how we need to understand the types of hood used in the labs. So we have one uh, called as a chemical film hoods, 
which we are using this when we handling the volatile and toxic chemicals. And in Malaysia, <coughs> we are we you will always see these hoods in in the chemical slabs. And the second one, we have the biosafety hoods where the use of this uh, handling. Uh, uh, the use of these biosafety hoods is when you handling the biological materials and with potential risk to the workers. Always use a vented biosafety hood for work involving biologicals and toxic chemicals. Okay, let us watch this video to have some picture on how we want to use how the the use of how to use a few hoods. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking all about fume hoods. Now, a fume hood or a fume cover is basically a self-contained environmental box that sucks away all the nasty volatile chemicals that you don't want to be breathing in. So anytime you're dealing with uh, organic solvents or reactions that produce some sort of gas, you want to be working inside one of these guys. Now, the fume hood offers two particularly important protections. One, it has a tremendous capacity to evacuate gases, so it eliminates any of the volatile compounds or dangerous chemicals in the air that we don't want to be breathing. In addition to that, the sash offers a physical barrier between us and any sort of chemical reaction, perhaps a, an out of control chemical reaction, uh, a fire, or, or even some sort of small explosion. Inside most fume hoods are the capacity to bring in uh, cold water, vacuum, uh, more cold water, nitrogen, and uh, of course vacuum as well. Some of them instead of having nitrogen just have compressed air. And a fume hood often has uh, scaffolding as well that you can uh, affix your own apparatus to. Now something you want to pay particularly close uh, attention to is that when you're working in the fume hood you don't want the sash too high as its capacity to actually evacuate the air reduces. Now this isn't because the air pumps uh, simply lack the capacity to move the air. It's actually because the larger the opening the greater the capacity somebody simply walking by has to create a low pressure and suck some of the air out. And that's not what you want. So it's very important that whenever you're working with a fume hood that you check your airflow meter to make sure you have sufficient airflow through. And if you ever encounter a situation where there starts to be a backdraft, there isn't sufficient airflow, it's very important to close the sash all the way and hit the emergency purge. That process is going to increase the airflow rate up to three to four times from what it normally is, ensuring that any gases being produced or, or contained within the fume hood are evacuated. And a final note, even if you aren't working with volatile organic compounds or anything like that, a fume hood is a great place to work with any sort of experiment that can be quite messy. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video about the fume hood. Uh, if you did, uh, throw a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more. And while you're down there, leave a comment below. Let us know any kind of crazy stories that you might have run into uh, using a fume hood. Experiments gone right or wrong. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so that is about the fume hood. Now, what is the personal protective equipment? So when we, when I have told you before, that when we are using the hood, we need to protect ourselves by wearing the PPE. So what is the personal protective equipment? Let's go in details about it. So, devices and garments to protect workers from injuries. That is the personal protective equipment. It is designed to protect the, your eyes, face, head, ears, feet, hands and arms, respiratory system and your whole body. So the PPE includes the Google face shield, safety glasses, hard hat, safety shoes, uh, all right, glove, vest, respirators, earplug, and ear mask. All right. So, why is it so important? Warning: the PPE should be a hazard protection of the last resort. It is not to be used for the permanently as a substitute for maintaining a safety and healthy work environment. So. When you use uh, the PPE, it's only used for the work environment 
cannot be made safer. Example, truth has elimination engineering, demonstration or by limiting or work pressure. Right? That means the use only when the work environment cannot be made safer. Okay? So that is why we are using the PPE. And yet, as a legal requirement stated in the Factories and Machinery, Safety, Health and Welfare Regulation 1970, under the Regulation 32, there is some uh, statements and uh, regulations uh, telling about the, about the PPE uh, on the clothing, on the safety helmets, glove, and also eye protection. While when you go to the another law, OSH, SHA 1994, we call this as Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994, under the use uh, regulation, use of the certain uh, chemical hazards to head regulation 2000, under section uh, 16, sub regulation 1, which is part 5, action to control exposure tells that it's a approved personal protective equipment shall be used means that approved means that the the recognize the the approval PPE shall be used in the conducting the chemical or handling the chemicals in, in the labs but there is a problem with some of the PPE because as I mentioned to you before the PPE is not a last resort for the for the protection of the workers, all right, it's a uh, use as the first option without reducing hazard at source. When you use this uh, PPE, is is not reducing the hazard, but it use is for to protect the workers from the risk from the hazards around. So the risk to worker if PPE fails, a failure cannot be detected. Right. That is the first problem with the PPE. The second one is the cost employee to believe there are safe and may take higher risks. And the results in worse consequences if people fail to forget to wear the equipment will shift the responsibility of safe working condition from the employer to the employee. What to protect from? Okay. So as I mentioned to you before, we need to protect the worker, especially uh, students, workers, while we are, they are doing work in the laboratory, is to, from the chemical hazards to health, such as gases and liquid. And when they're handling the, the equipment that giving a radiation, right? ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation, such as heat, high intensity light and noise. So they need to wear the glasses. And for the dust, example, mineral dust, okay, they need to wear face shields. And then if they uh, have a hazard wet, they need to have the uh, shoe, safety shoe, in helping them from the uh, slippery and also from the sharp objects. So, what are the considerations into the when you are select the PPE? So we need to take into the consideration on the selection of the PPE because the selection of PPE must be dependent on the hazard identification, risk assessment, and control measure implemented. And the PPE is used to complement or combination of other control measure, and it also must be carried out under a PPE program, right? Uh, must be certified product to ensure the acceptable level of protection for hazard. Example, we have certification from the CRIPS, okay, one of the uh, agency, uh, uh, the quality agency bodies in Malaysia. And also, we need to see what are the limitations of the PPE uh, for, from, uh, from that type of the PPE. So these are the category of PPE. We have the hearing and asthmatic protection. We have the hearing protection. We have a hand and arm protections, or our eyes and face protection, and so on. Okay, so let's uh, watch this. <laughs>
created using Powtoon. All right. So this is uh, the video. It shows the how we want to use the PPE. Where this is, why is it the PPE is so important? All right. So the PPE has a uh, uh, several uh, categories like uh, PPE for the eyes and face protection. Examples: when you want to use, when you want to protect your eyes and also the face, you will may use the Google's or spectacles and face shields for the protection from the injury from the physicals or uh, chemical agents and also radiation and uh, this uh, eye and face for is the widest use and the widest range of styles or models and types that we have in all uh, around the world okay and the face shield also must be used in combination with basic air protection so if you can see now we have a pandemic okay COVID-19 so ma majority of the suppliers in the market are uh, providing the Google's face shield for protection for the COVID-19 all right so it's uh protect you from the airborne uh, uh, contaminations so you can use that for that purpose okay and the clothing and lab course this is in some examples of the clothing lab course that use in in university it's also the, the selection of this clothing and lab course is dependent on the uh, type of the hazards and the clothing and jewelry also becomes hazard so the materials that we need to uh, use is depending on the in previous collective clotting and also the protection against the heat flame and also the hot metals and maybe well suited for one and dangerous for another and next is the respiratory protection which is to protect face piece masks hoods and also helmet it is designed to protect the wearer against the pro uh, the to protect employees from the breathing contaminated and or protection against particulates vapors oxygen deficiency air or combination of for the tree above so for the foot and leg is uh, the option that we have it depends on what types of the uh, the work that we are or job tasks that we are are doing okay for example we are using safety boots when we are in, working in the construction we are using this uh, what we call this uh, vinyl uh, plastic vinyl booties all right uh, or any other cover uh, for working in the labs, all right? Or we can use the gaiter, leggings, pads, and clothes, or conductive shoes. It's depending. It's all these options are depending on what type of jobs or activities uh, we are uh, doing, all right? And the pattern is depends on the uh, the. Uh, safety poops uh, or safety protection okay for example uh, you will have in, in the construction site you need to have the anti-slip or safety boots when you are working in electricals uh, electrical like wiring or uh, you, you need to use the electrically conductive or insulating uh, boots or shoes okay so the hazard is come from the wet uh, electrostatic blue up cars and punctures falling objects heavy loose metals and chemical splash and also the vehicles all right the next is the hand and arm which is for the hand and arm there are so many uh, gloves that we can use it depends on the types of uh, activities in the labs or our activities that we do in, in our job examples when you are working in construction you may use this type this type of uh, uh, glove all right so we have many types of glove okay we have the depressible vinyl glove we have the count lads we have mace we have red wrist scarf and armlets so the hazards is uh, depends on the abrasion or temperature extreme, cuts and punctures, impact chemicals, electric shock, skin irritation, disease or contamination, vibration risk of product contamination. So the material also is different. Example for the leather, they use for the leather to protect you from the abrasion or heat resistance. 
from the PVC is for the water abrasion protection, water elemented chemical resistant. For the rubber glove, we are using for degreasing, paint, and spraying. And for the clothes or nylon, we have for hand grips. Okay, when you're working using the hand reel, so you need to use this type of clothes or nylons because it can grip your hands. Okay, uh, latex for the electrical insulation works. Alright, so it's, that is all about the uh, PPE. Now, I want to bring you to the emergency control devices. Okay, so what is emergency versus preventive safety equipment? So emergency safety equipment is used when there is in an actual emergency. For example, there is a fire, there is a smoke chemical spill. So that is the emergency safety equipment. While for the preventive safety equipment is used to help prevent an emergency, from happening so these are the type of emergency safety equipment we have in the lab or in the building fire extinguisher okay so the use when there is a small fire on a counter desk or trash can do not point or use a fire extinguisher for on a person okay <coughs> fire blanket we are used when a fire extinguisher cannot be used so we use the fire blanket for electrical fire and human uh, it can be used for that and also to make sure that you protect yourself and your hand while using a fire blanket. So this is how you use the fire extinguisher. Remember the password. Pull, aim, squeeze and sweep. Alright. So pull the pin. Break the seals and test extinguisher. Pass means aim at the base of fire. Ensure you have a means of escape. Squeeze. Squeeze the operating handle to operate extinguisher and discharge the agent and sweep. Sweep from the slide to side to completely extinguish the fire. All right. So this is how you are using the fire extinguisher. So other than that, in the laboratory, what you have, what you can see is the eye wash. This is some example of picture of the eye wash. It's used if chemicals get into your eyes, and you need to uh, the eye should be flushed with the clean water for at least twenty minutes. Okay. And then we, you can see the emergency shower, shower where we are using this uh, for the large chemical spill to the persons, all right, on the persons. And next is the door release button. We have designed to override the electrical locking release devices in the case of loss of power to the emergency exit. And these are the fire blanket I have mentioned to you just now. And these are the emergency information in fire exit. Use the Southeast Exit Stairway as your main fire emergency exit to leading up and out to the courtyard relay point. Alright, when there is emergency, you need to use the stairway. And these are the some of the emergency information backfire exit where you can use all these uh, as Southeast Exit Stairway at the back of the building, but there is no re entry to the building from the stairway. And this stairway exists at the bottom level. All right, we have a storage cabinet. Not more than 60 gallons of class one and all class two liquids, or not more than 120 gallons, gallons of class three liquids that permitted in these cabinets, okay? So it must be constitutional level, flammable, keep fire aware. So it must be put in front of this cabinet. And doors on metal cabinet must have a three point lock top sides and bottom and the door still must be raised at least two inches above the bottom of the cabinet. And lastly, the summary from what I'm uh, teaching today about this topic is chemical for who must be properly used and it also the most reliable engineering controls in the laboratory. PPE is one of the protection of the last resort and the emergency control devices is to ensure you to have a safe evacuation of the occupant. So that's all from me guys. See you next time. So these are some references that I have used in conducting this lecture. So uh, thank you so much. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.